Hello, CG Financial Group agents. Charlie Gipple here. Hey, it's been a while since I talked to you via video. I had a planned surgery, was in the hospital for a week, and then out of the hospital recovering for a week. But all of this really started to hit a fever pitch when I was in there just watching this with bated breath, watching the coverage of this short squeeze thing, this, this short selling thing, this GameStop thing. And since then, I've gotten a lot of questions from consumers and financial advisors alike, or financial professionals alike, I should say, not all of them advisors, uh, saying, uh, what's short selling? What is... Uh, what is a short squeeze? Is that like a, a wrestling move or something? What's a short squeeze? So I thought I would address it today. Now this is not meant to be consumer facing, right? This is meant to be financial professional facing, not meant to be securities advice. It's the furthest thing from buying anything, having anything to do with any call options, put options, selling short, uh, none of that stuff, right? So not securities advice, not investment advice, and meant to be educational to financial professionals. Now, let's step back. What is short selling? What short selling is, is let's say that there's a stock out there that's trading for $100. The current value of a stock is $100. Maybe I expect the value of that stock to drop. The company, it's you know, it, it's it's just not in good shape in my opinion. I think the earnings announcements are gonna underperform in the future and I think that the stock price is gonna drop. The, uh, my question may be, is there a way that I can profit off of that stock dropping, which is really kind of counterintuitive? Well, yeah, of course, there are lots of ways that uh, I, as a personal investor, as well as a ton of institutional investors out there, can profit off that stock dropping. One which way is selling short. Now, a couple of ways. You can buy put options. You could sell short. Uh, you, could, you could do a lot of different things. Now, Put options, by the way, although a lot of this crisis, so to speak, has to do with put options, I'm not going to go into that, but I want to talk about selling short. Selling short can be a little riskier than put options. It usually is riskier than put options, but it can also be more lucrative than put options, right? So what is selling short? So I expect this stock to drop from $100 to whatever. Um, what a selling short is, is me going to a brokerage firm and saying, I want to borrow that stock. I want to borrow that $100 stock. Well, Charlie, why would you want to borrow a stock that you would expect to decrease? Well, because what I would then do is I would turn around and sell it to somebody, right? Immediately sell that $100 stock to somebody. By the way, keep in mind that I've borrowed this stock. I've borrowed it from a brokerage firm. I'm paying interest on the collateral because they're going to ask for collateral on that stock that I've borrowed from them. There's a fee that the brokerage firm will uh, assess to me, but the brokerage firm eventually is going to want that stock back, right? So where the plan goes smoothly is where that $100 stock that I've sold for $100, my cash in hand was $100 immediately, where the plan goes smoothly is when that $100 stock goes to say like $20, right? What happens at that point in time? Well, if I choose to close out my position, I would buy that stock for $20 and I would give it back to the brokerage firm. So not including that interest and all that, just keeping this simple, what has happened after I closed out my position on that selling short of XYZ stock? What happened was, is I got cash in hand at the beginning of it for $100. At the end, my investment was basically $20, right? So in this example, that's somewhat exaggerative, I had an investment of $20 and I got $100 out of this. That is a $80 return. That is a 400% return, right? That selling short was a great thing for me. Well, not all short sales turn out great, right? Because what happens when the opposite happens? Let's say that that stock price goes to $200. So the stock price goes to $200. I, as a investor, whether institutional or personal or whatever, I have a decision to make. Do I continue to hold out hope that it's going to drop down or do I cover my position? Do I go out and buy that stock to give back to the brokerage firm in order to <laughs> mitigate any losses any further? Well, let's say that I cover my position, close out the position at $200. What has happened? So I go buy the stock for $200, give it back to the brokerage firm and say, here, uh, good riddance, I'm done with this. What has happened? What has happened was at the beginning of all this, remember I sold that stock for $100. At the end of this, my investment in this stock was $200. That means $200 investment, I got back $100. I lost 50% of my money, not including the interest that the brokerage firm assessed to me, all of that. 
it can turn out very badly. Where it really gets bad is before you close out your position, a lot of other people, institutional invest investors that have a lot of horsepower say, whoa, we need to close out our position. And they go out and they buy that stock. And because of the demand of the stock, what happens when a gazillion people, especially with a lot of money, start buying that stock? That stock just skyrockets. So what happens is, is a self-perpetuating short squeeze is what it is, to where the stock just goes to the stratosphere because all of these short positions, all these positions to where people were bearish on the stock are now paradoxically buying the stock and driving it up. And not just them, but people on social media platforms have said, wow, there is a lot of short positions or a lot of short interest on the stock. A lot of people that expect the stock to go down. And man, when they cover their bets, they're going to hit a short squeeze and drive this sucker higher. So my friends in social media land, let's all buy this stock. See if we can hit it. See if we can get that stock in short squeeze territory to where, you know what, from then on, we're going to make a ton of money. And I'm foreshadowing, of course, the GameStop deal, but that worked in this case. By driving the price up, by working with a bunch of other people in this scenario to drive the price up to short squeeze territory to where um, institutional money managers had so much pain that they can't take it anymore, to, to talk a little, uh, uh, to, to exaggerate it a little bit. Um, well, what happened? They hit the short squeeze area and these people that were bullish on the stock kind of uh, profited, not kind of, they did profit off those that were bearish on the stock and had to be forced to buy the stock in order to cover their bets. So let's talk about GameStop here real brief. At the beginning of January, January 4th, uh, GameStop was at $19. $19. And again, the, the, the short interest was like 120% of the stock outstanding is sold short. Uh, or has a short position on it, right? So there are facts and figures. There's uh, information that's published that says this particular stock, the short interest on this stock, a lot of times you'll read in the Wall Street Journal short interest on various stocks, which is a sign of how bearish people are on the stock. Um, it was like 120% of outstanding shares. Basically, a good chunk of people expect that stock to drop in value, right? That didn't happen. Why? Because of social media platforms. There was some good guidance that was released uh, later on in the month. But because of all of this, what happened was it's GameStop on, I think it was January 25th, went to $144. So think of that. You're one of these institutional money managers that had short interest in this stock. You sold the stock short at $19, right? So you got cash in hand, $19, hoping that it'll go to like $10 or whatever, but instead that stock went to $144. That is when the announcement came out that a lot of these institutional money managers have to cover their positions. They have to close out of their positions or they have chosen to close. Well, some of them had to close out their positions. Why? Because um, they were getting margin calls. Because keep in mind that there are certain amount of capital that these brokerage firms have to have. And when they get in the red really, really far, the government, the regulations are not going to let these hedge funds, these institutional money managers fail. So they started to get margin calls, which basically means we have to close out our position. We have to go out, we have to buy that stock for $144, even though we only got $19 out of this. And think of that. So your investment was $144, you got $19 out of that. So what is that? That's 125% loss on a uh, or a $125 loss on a $144 investment. What is that? I think that's almost 90%, is it? Uh, um, yeah, almost 90%, like, like 85 to 88% or something like that on that. But here's what happened is all these institutional money managers started to buy that stock, which these people in social media land were like, go, go baby, go baby. What happened when they all started to buy that stock? The stock took off into the stratosphere. It went to like almost $500 uh, late January, January 27th or 28th. It went to like 480 some dollars. So it absolutely skyrocketed. So those folks in social media land, yeah, it worked for them, right? Now, it's not always going to work. You know, there are a lot of more robustly traded stocks to where it's not that easy to move the market. But because of all of this, there are like eight different areas that I talked about here that 
that is just blowing the minds of a lot of people. Another area is, is did these brokerage firms, one brokerage firm in particular that I'm not going to name because that's not my deal, um, one brokerage firm in particular um, shut off the trading or at least shut off the buying of that stock. Uh, they have their reasons, but the perception is, is they shut off the buying of the stock. Uh, the perception is they shut off the buying of the stock basically to protect the hedge funds, the, the institutional money managers, because that short squeeze was hit and they wanted to limit the losses for those hedge funds. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's what the perception is. That's what you read in the media. I have my opinion, but I choose not to share it right now. But that is what a short squeeze is. That's what short selling is. And that's kind of a very high level overview of what happened with the GameStop deal. And a lot of this also had to do with put options, actually more than short selling. But again, the concept is there. Um, not going to go into put options a whole lot, which quite simply is a right, but not the obligation to sell a stock at a set price at a future point in time. By the way, I have a video on that if you want me to send you a video of a put option. But anyway, hope that makes sense. Have a good day, folks.